Israel is interactive with Aisha Ibrahim and myself, Israelite. Of course. All and right, welcome. Good. Thank you. It's good to see you, Israel. Yeah, good to see you too. I'm in love with something about you, but I won't say it here. I'll say it after here. And you know how to join this conversation is on Facebook.com slash join news on TV. On Twitter is on join news on TV. And you know the rules? Let's keep it tight. No harsh words. Let's have a sweet conversation. And today marks 16 years since 126 football fans lost their lives at the Accra Sports Stadium. Many people lost family, friends, and loved ones. But since that tragic incident, um, we've still remained a football-loving country. We still enjoy our football. And the question is, have we learned our lessons? What measures have been put in place to avoid a recurrence? Ghanaian, we are a football fan nation. We like football. And these two teams called Kotoko and Haas, when, whenever they are going to play, that means the whole nation is divided into two. So therefore, Sports Council have to see to it that whenever they are going to play such a match like that. They should find a very nice organizers and referee who can organize the match very well. So it will bring that kind of con con uh, controversial. We really learned a lesson. Me, my cousin was part of it, but God saved her, she didn't die. But after that, she has never been to the stadium again to watch any football match or anything. And most Ghanaians, it's, let's say it has never repeated again ever since it happened. So we've learned a lesson there. Um, because um, what happened, you know, because of this situation, a lot of people don't allow others to go to sports stadium. And even when they go there, they take very good care of themselves. You know, they don't want to mingle themselves with those who go there to fight or do something that is not, you know, um, 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 proper. So I think um, we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot here. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we have. Because uh, a lot of people go to stadium, drink already. They, they, uh, most of them are. It seems like Ghana they love they love they, they love football too much to the extent that they sometimes they lose their senses because we are humans and then we love games. So I don't think if you go to if you go to stadium you need to um, sacrifice your life for something. You have to follow rules. Even if you lose, you have to be a gentleman or lady. Soccer starting the game. So I believe uh, there is a lesson learned from that. Yeah. Such, as. Such as how to comport yourself and then uh, accept the referee's verdict. All right, a lot more is on Facebook. Let's check it out. Nana Kujo Rimpong says the very things that cause this tragic incident, like bad officiating, improper security, and corruption, are still being perpetrated each and every day. So I don't see that any lesson has yet been learned from it. I just pray God will protect us from a day like this. Kwesi Boateng Epa says, Ghana, we only learn from, for two weeks and have to reverse to our old behavior. A practical example is the June 3 disaster. No lessons learned so far. Let any disaster emanate in any of our stadia, and it's there. You will see that our leaders are only locations and garrulous. Barry Markubaji says, I don't think we've learned our lessons because you still have fans abusing referees for decisions they make. Some still go to the extra extent of going to fiscally attack match officials until such a ruliness is curbed, events like these won't cease to happen. Come back here, Summit says, I think we learned nothing from the tragedy because matches are still played at the stadium without ambulances. We're good at talking about issues as they happen. We waste resources and time setting committees upon committees, but nothing is implemented from the report of these committees. Laying off wreaths to remember those who perished that they are useless to the children and mothers they left behind. Hashtag, we must think right. Kwabna Minta says, may all the souls that got lost rest in perfect peace. But from referees, sports, commentators to spectators, nothing has changed in us. So we are not equipped to prevent a recurrence of such an event. Shif Manose says, it is a sad remembrance. I pray it never happened 
and never again may the souls of the departed brothers find peace with their maker never again he says sita benua ando right when this thing happens i w when it happened i was such a small child but i still remember it from yesterday i won't lie i will never go to a stadium to watch uh, much that is how much i got affected as a child because i saw the images on tv and the funeral and all that i still remember pa and AJ Chirame says, our law should work. Look at the state of our sports stadium, the state of our auditoriums where most programs take place. How do we adhere to our safety standards? We are still sitting on time on a time bomb waiting to explode. We'll be quick to blame the devil afterwards. Those are some comments on Facebook. Oh, Bing for fear something says, hope it never happens again. Yeah, more lessons has been learned. May their souls continue to rest in peace. And those are some of the comments on Facebook. Also, a popular U.S. pastor, Daryl Scott, has been caught using the tithes from his congregation to fund the building of his mansion. According to him, he did so because, and I quote, God wants me to live a good life, end of quote. The question I ask, what in your opinion can be done to stop pastors from extorting money from their church members? Tight to board mansions. Well, I don't see nothing wrong with it because the tight is for the church. So if they are using it to build the mansion for, I don't know, yeah, for the church, for himself, well, <laughs> he is the one that God gave the power to. So if through the tithes, he will build a mansion for himself, no problem. Oh, I think that pastor is a selfish pastor. Because why should you use the congregation sites to build a mansion for yourself? It should have been used to build, let's say, a chapel for all. Or maybe a company or something that someone can also benefit. Not um, a story building for yourself, for your selfish interest. That one is not advisable. Titan itself is out of touch. Because I do not understand why a Ghanaian, you are not a Jew, you are not even a Levite, and then you are, you are following some rules, let me say hundreds of years ago, even Jewish people as we speak, they do something called contribution. So this particular trouble has been a canker in this country. And I think most of the um, ministers of God need to sit down and revisit that topic. In a situation where one-man people, one-man churches try to um, use that tactics to enrich themselves, it's wrong. In the 21st century, we need, to, we need to have a new look and restructure the way we, we have our Christianity. <laughs> uh, that one, I, I, I don't know anything much about it. <laughs> a pastor used a, a, a tithe uh -huh. to build a mansion. I think he did well. He's just, he's just trying to save the individual's life. Uh, something like that. <laughs> it's interesting, Israel. And I think we have such issues in Ghana too. Even though we've not heard of munching per se, we hear of pastors exporting money from their members to do a whole and lot of things. There's one comment on Facebook just like that. So Hadora Mystical says, Hmm, I don't know whether to call it robbing God. Anyway, I'm not surprised because it's happening right here in Ghana where some church members invested church money in DKM for themselves. <laughs> a J. Treme says this is a non-issue in Ghana. Gangsters, ritualists, and magicians uh, have taken over the work of God, giving themselves grandiose illusional titles. I pray for the day all churches in Africa will be taxed. Beware, it shan't come to pass. And back here, some it says it's rather unfortunate that they, this man is caught, but it's a normal act in our recent churches and mosques. Our leaders are enjoying the fruits of our hard work. I'm not surprised at all. And just call me, Jaru says, these are the kind of pastors that are turning believers into non believers. What even came over him? I'm totally shocked right now. Daniel, uh, what? He says, this pastor, pa, he needs just 99 lashes, some kwa, provided the deacons and elders do not know anything about it. Obed Kwanza says, well, the question is, what is the purpose of paying tight? The money is meant for the welfare of the men of God, the Levite, 
I see nothing wrong with this. Is, is that true? Do you pay tithes for your pastors or what? 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 Well, the, the tithes you're paying, uh, it's not going to go to God. Definitely, it, it's. It's supposed it, to be for the upkeep of the church oh, and the church activities. Okay, and so. For the administration of the church. So yes, some of it will end up uh, going pastors to the pastor. Pockets. Okay. Yeah, we'll use some of it to pay his salary and. Okay, and, and his upkeep. Is it a crime? I think that the tithes are paid to the pastors on behalf of God. I say more. Hmm. I think that money should have been given to join. <laughs> Kofi says the money should have been given to join this. To be sent to the for? baby and child unit. Maybe. That yeah. would have been better. And Jatua Gati replies and says, ha, ha, ha. And Prince said him says it's normal what do you expect the money to be used for blaine says there's nothing wrong with that that's that's where he, he gets his hand to mouth the media simon writes some of the shepherds are feeding on the sheep instead of feeding them and i mean abdul aziz says another charlatan robbing innocent people in the name of god idris musa says most of the churches are for businesses so maybe he's one of them and Kwabna Minta says, I don't think it's a big deal. I think tight was instituted by God for the upkeep of. <laughs> but it was God. Is it in the Bible to pay yes, tight? It, yeah, it is biblical. Okay, and in the Bible it states that it should be used for the upkeep of the Deliverance. church. Okay. All right, so finally, a British man has confessed that he kept the body of his late wife for six days six days before finally taking her to the mortuary. He calls it his way of demystifying death and to prove his devotion to his wife. What do you make of this, his action? And would you do same if you were in his shoes? Tight to board mansions. Well, I don't see nothing wrong. I'm afraid. <laughs> I'll be afraid of him because now he has turned to a ghost. So I'll be afraid of him. Thank you. He, dead in there is surely to smell, so I'll go and keep the body at more. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. It's not good to keep a dead body with you. So I'll, I'll straight away I'll take it to the mortuary. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't see nothing. I don't see any love between this. Because the person is dead, and why, why, why would you love a dead body? This is very, very sickening. I will not, never do that. You see, society, society is dynamic. Our ancestors, their time, is not a time anymore, because now this is information age. The world is go, growing so fast, so fast to the sense that we need to understand the kind of um, century we are in. Because we move from agricultural age, we move from stone age, age, we move from industrialization age. Now this information is so. Why should we? Why should I sick, um, sleep with a dead person? When you are dead, you are dead. That's it. That ends. Hey, sir. <laughs> Things happen, oh, oh, yes. <laughs> strange <laughs> things are happening to so keep a dead body for six days. Is uh, probably he was so devoted to the wife and uh, didn't want to believe that the wife was gone. My goodness, he was hoping that the wife was going to resurrect. Maybe she was in a deep sleep. <laughs> Interesting. Imba Abu says, We're in a crazy world. Why on earth will I need to understand the mystery surrounding the dead better for him? Some people don't even believe keeping the dead front. Uh, once your resting place is prepared, they hurry in laying you to rest. I wouldn't wear those crazy shoes of his. Barry Makuba just says that's absolutely unnecessary. So daring and very scary. How can you be in a room with a corpse for six days? Like, if you me, I go collapse, even realizing he's dead. <laughs> Left alone, stay with a dead body. I just won't take that risk for any reason. And that could you bring Pong Barton says, it is really sad to lose our loved ones, but to go to the extent of keeping the body for days will only add more sorrow to our plight because you'll eventually have to bury them. Uh, Baye Jeremiah says, never in my life. So fiakwa, me, I can't sleep in that house for some days. She's my wife and I respect her cause, but not to keep it in the house. She now belongs to the spirit world and should be sent 
to have appropriate rest in place. But hold it. I mean, if people are saying, I mean, the body is going to turn into a ghost. It doesn't turn into a ghost. Even if it's a ghost, it's your wife. It's you know? <laughs> what are you afraid of? Would you be able to do that? It's your wife. If you see your wife's ghost, <laughs> unless you kill her. <laughs> But to stay with her for six days, oh, it's some kind of way. But Frank Kobler says, she's my wife when she was alive, but as soon as she's dead, she belongs <laughs> to a different state and a different man. I don't know. I will not dare. Kwabna Mingsa says, a very big no, demystified death in what sense? Even the great Okonfanochi and Tugbe Chali of the great Ashanti kingdom and Everland, respectively, couldn't demystify death. The media Simon says this is unusual and not normal. He might be reacting psychologically to the painful loss of his wife. And Jaru says any normal being of sound mind wouldn't do such a thing. I guess this man needs a vacation at a psychiatric hospital, really. I mean, Abdulaziz says if you ask me to describe this man uh, in one word, I would say crazy. Bao Musa says, that should be the last thing I would do in life. Death is inevitable. Hadura Mystical Brahma says, this is madness. How can you do that? Why? Was he... Oh. Oh, come on. Why would you say this? AJ Shrema says, Anansi story. If this had happened in any part of Africa, the CNN factor would have been in play using all sort of adjectives to describe as maybe he's undergoing widowhood rights. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you maybe he has not paid the what? Maybe he has not paid the bread price. Now, now why it says fiction, dead body for six days. Do you know how it smells and harmful for your breath? And the new goodness says, nowhere cool, they must check his mental state. And Ruidu says, why will I want to be in the shoes of a madman? Those are some comments on Facebook and on that note we end the interactive segment and after the show PM Express comes up please don't go away my name is Aisha Vine enjoy the rest of the, the programs